All right. All right. It's a new set. We Who's hyped? Are you hyped? I'm hyped. Answer now in the poll. How's everybody doing? Been a while since I've seen y'all. Jake's been killing it with the foil quest. But I haven't been around. At least live. Randy, Rob, what's up? Buzz, I'm not your biological father. I hope everyone's having a great Thursday. What better to do on a Thursday evening? Relax us into the night. Then look at some new MTG cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. I gotta tell you, the aesthetic, this is my, this is my stuff. I can't curse this early in the stream or YouTube will demonetize us. Stream starts in about 10. What I figure is we'll look at the trailer. I haven't watched the trailer yet. I say we watch the trailer in a couple minutes right before the stream starts. And then we look at some of these new cards. Oh, almost forgot. If everybody could go ahead and lean forward and check your temperature. Okay. I think we're good. That should be good. This aesthetic, this aesthetic. Oh, it's a teaser, not a trailer. Okay. All right. Whatever it is. Can we watch it? Is everybody down to watch it? Does nobody want to watch it? Is everybody like, I'm good on the teaser, Joel. I want to see what this new planeswalker is. I think that's who we're looking at right here. Let me point the correct direction. I think this is our new planeswalker, Saito. Kaito? I read it once. Jank, what's up? Good to see you. Mox, you don't like the trailer. Pac-Man said it's worth the watch. Ace, David. All right, we got more people wanting to watch it. We are 86% hype on this set. That is actually shocking to me. That is shocking to me. 
I thought that everybody was just going to be burnt out. Not excited for a new set. But honestly, can I say it? Can I say it? Crimson Vow was kind of boring. I was looking to see if I was looking to see if Mark Rosewater was going to bust in here and clock me in the head. Rob, I could agree with you. We're just addicts. We just want more cards, yo. Want some good commander cards. That's really what I'm looking for here. That's what I think I'm looking for anyway. What do y'all want in Kamigawa? Neon Dynasty. There's got to be something cool. Got to be something in there that you're looking forward to. A little callback to the OG. That'd be cool. Get a little jeté action going on. That brings back bad memories for some. Some people are into it. Whoa. All right. Yeah, see. Oh, a good land cycle. Mox. Ooh. Right on the head. That is perfecto. All right. Let's take a second on this. Swap over real fast. All right. We're going to watch this trailer. That was cool. The aesthetic is so dope. I would watch this as a movie. Was that a card all broken apart? Wanderers chilling. Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> Seriously, a teaser. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so that was a spoiled card I saw. Yeah, okay, so... That was cool. The aesthetic is dope. I'm already in. I'm already in. I would watch a whole movie of that, like digitized, moving in and out, historical to future kind of thing. That could be a cool movie. Cautiously hyped. I think that's where I'm at. I think that's where I'm at with cautiously hyped. I'm watching the Twitch channel, the MTG Twitch channel to see when they go live. So we're not going to miss it. I just want to hang. At least until this stream starts. Let's get it over here. Magic, 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 magic. They're offline currently, but we will be watching. Yeah, that was uh it does have a Tron vibe and I think that's why I I think that's why I dig it so much. I think I was one of 12 people that really liked Tron Legacy and wish that that had made more money so that that series could keep going. Because I thought Tron Legacy was dope. It was a simple little straightforward thing. I think it threw everybody off that he was like a copy of himself or something. He was one of his programs that had turned on him. Grew up with OG Tron? Yeah. Yeah, Rant. Dude. Mr. Wright. Points for you. Points to Rifendor. Tron Legacy was dope. Um, didn't? Didn't, uh, what band was it that did all the music for that movie? Daft Punk. Daft Punk did all the music for that. That was cool, too. Yeah, the story was fine. The visuals were awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pat, I can tell. I can see that. 
What is the painting behind me? <laughs> I'm in a haunted library right now. No, I am currently in the living room of my mother. Ah, make the jokes. It's not my mom's basement. It's my mom's living room. My wife and I are building a house right now, so we are staying rent free. At mom's place. So currently I'm in the living room and I didn't redecorate it to be streamer cool, just piano cool. Look at that. Got a piano behind me. That's production value right there. That is production value. Let's ride him on. You do have to do what you got to do. Oh, goodness gracious. Anybody played the alchemy? I have avoided that like the plague. Rick or Mortis, I'm not sure. That is a question that many people have asked, but uh, I'm not sure. Go seabirds. I don't, I'm not a seabirds fan. But I am a Braves fan. Oh, what is that? Champions 2021? Oh, best baseball team in the world? Oh, Atlanta Braves, best baseball team in the world? What? Best team in the world? Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Go Braves. Oh, Herder, what is that a sport? No, no, no. People are allowed to like things. Even if they're popular things. Nobody's done any alchemy yet. Yeah. Dodgers, dude. Hmm. I remember we put the Dodgers away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we definitely put the Dodgers away this year. Pretty handily. Just like chomped them. Sent them, sent them packing. I do remember that. Best team in the... Okay, so let me address this. We're going to turn this into a baseball stream real fast. Best team in the USA world doesn't compete. That is not necessarily true because all of the best baseball players in the world are playing in the MLB. Granted, they are not named, you know, United States, Cuba, Dominican Republic, but all those guys from all over the world are competing on MLB teams. And they're all very proud of their home countries, too. I love it when they're running around with their flags and stuff. One of my favorite events that doesn't happen enough is the World Baseball Classic, where you'll get, like, Venezuela and Italy and Cuba and DR, and everybody's up in there competing for their country. That's a cool thing. But enough about baseball. Go Braves. The reveal starts right this moment. It looks like, well, that's not 100% true. You can see up there, 14 minutes and 36 seconds from now, after we watch an American Eagle ad, not sponsored by American Eagle, we will be checking out the new cards from Crimson Vow, not from Crimson Vow, from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. He sets... They're just always happening, huh? World Baseball Classic is amazing. Ooh, there we go. There's a little Kamigawa Neon Dynasty art. Chicken Richard. Do I think serialized cards will come, as Rudy says? Serialized cards are here, bro. Or sis, friend. Friend, serialized cards are here. Serialized cards have arrived. That is just going to expand more and more and more. This is what they do. They test us with a little thing. They sprinkle it in. And then that becomes the norm once we're used to it. It's like a... It's like being in a pot of water that's slowly boiling. You don't realize you're in trouble until you're, it's probably too late. first sliver yo i can't queue up for brawl like three to historic brawl on arena more than like three or four times without playing a damn sliver deck everybody's in there i 
I'm betting, you know, the spirit dragons from first time around. Those those are great in EDH. They're play they're they're fun cards in EDH. They're not all playable. <laughs> Ava, I think it's going to take a little bit more to pull those from this market. But it'd be cool to get, you know, two, three color versions of some of those dragons as commanders. That'd be tight. You know, they've done such a push into legendary as a super type. You know, this is the set for it. I mean, which one was it that the whole sub theme of the set was legendary matters? Yeah, Randy, that's what I'm saying. More flip cards, Chicken Richard? Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess it's okay. More acceptable in the age of arena, but... Hype is... It's... Sideshow, hype is like a cold. It's contagious. You feel all all fuzzy i don't know where the clock went timer the countdown went on weekly mtg oh <laughs> let's see what these these people have to say wary but we're talking about it today and i have two of the people behind the set alongside me uh, virtually speaking, I've got Grace Fong and Mark Rosewater. Uh, Grace, why don't you start out by telling everyone what your role was with Kamigawa Neon Dynasty? Hey, so on Neon Dynasty, I was one of the narrative designers. Um, so I was working with the other narrative designers to kind of do the outline for the story and get all the web fiction for you guys to read so that you could be welcomed into this uh, set that we have. Yeah. Mark? Uh, I was the lead uh, vision designer and exploratory designer. So I led those two teams and it was my team's job to go, what exactly is this set? Cause when we started as you'll, it, we'll tell the story today, but we didn't quite know what it was when we started. So. Yeah. And we are going to talk about what this set is, some stuff you can expect, some cool cards. We have previews. We're going to show you some new cards. We're going to show you some new art. We've got a lot of cool stuff lined up. Uh, first, let's talk about some important dates we have coming up so you know when to start looking for things so on january 11th we're going to come back with is that good kamigawa creative round table that is going to have a bunch of cool people talking up, about baby? the Take story and setting and how kamigawa came to be uh we're going to follow that up with some short histories filling in a lot of the gaps in the last 1200 years uh, and the storyline between when we originally visited Kamigawa, then you're going to get all of the Kamigawa fiction on January 24th to 26th before we even get to previews, which are going to start in earnest on January 20th. Kaito Shizuki down there at the bottom. That's what I saw as that Planeswalker's Kamigawa. name. We're leading story heavy this time, and uh, there's going to be a reason for that because... There's some pretty exciting stuff that happens that we, we don't want to spoil in the cards. But we will get to that. First, uh, 1,200 years is a long time, so we're going to take a look at some of the stuff uh, visually that Kamigawa has to offer. Uh, and we're going to start by showing off some art that's going to kind of look familiar, but obviously has a little bit of, little bit of change to it. So let's throw up the first piece of art, which is of... Ganjo Seat of the Empire. So, Grace, tell us why this is important, what we're looking at, all of that. So, even though 1,200 years have passed, the uh, Imperials still have a strong presence here in Kamigawa, and Ai Ganjo is the, um, is the seat of their headquarters. So the Imperial Court is here. This is where the Emperor lives. This is where the Imperials have their academy and where they train. Um, 
the people who will be going through Kamigawa and helping uh, maintain order. This art is from one of our uh, partners over in Kogoro. Um, we have a lot of awesome Japanese artists working on this set with us. Uh, tell us a little bit more about Kogoro. So Kogoro is a, uh, was a partner for um, the Mystical Archive, I believe. Mm -hmm. And they are a Japanese art studio that works with artists who do manga, uh, video game illustration, a bunch of different products there. And they help us find people that can interpret our cards in a brand new style so that we can expand um, the types of art that is available on magic cards. All right. And then uh, I'm, I'm assuming they helped us with this next one then as well, which is Boseju, a name that's also going to sound familiar, who endures. So what do we see here? What's special about Boseju? Yes. So this is one of the uh, Kogoro cards. Boseju is the this art looks uh, awesome. biggest tree in what remains of the Jukai forest. Essentially, as the 1200 years passed, lots and lots of urbanization occurred. People started encroaching on the Jukai forest and Boseju, um, the magical tree in the center of the forest, basically refused to be outgrown by the skyscrapers. It grew every single time a new building was raised, it would grow even higher until it is still the highest point in uh, Tawashi, the main city of uh, Kamigawa. Okay. Uh, the next piece of art is one that some of you may have seen already today. There we go. Uh, but we wanted to talk a little bit about this. This is the key art for the set. And Grace, what are we looking at here? Dragons. So as you can see, the five dragons are back. So some of you know, they probably they probably know that they, uh, a number of them passed away during the Kami War, but you, uh, as one of, in one of those uh, saga stories that you're going to see, um, then you will get an explanation of how they were reborn and worked with each other to continue being protectors of Kamigawa. Okay, and these are not strictly the same dragons reborn. They're, they're a little bit different, aren't they? Yes. So once... Um, when a number of them passed away during the Kami War, Ryusei was the only one that survived. And Ryusei took it upon themselves to uh, bring back Jugen, the, uh, the dragon who had been protecting the monks of Jukai. And together they worked to bring back the other three. One in the bottom um, right's got like a bullish thing going on. Forms. So what you're seeing here is the rebirth of the yeah, old dragon magic decks of Kamigawa continue to get better in the modern era. Okay, and we are actually going to preview one of these a little bit later in the stream. Come on, I uh, thought we were going to see our up, first card. Let's we, we go. We saw this a little bit uh, in the teaser trailer, which actually we skipped over. Uh, so let's let's take a look at the set symbol, and then we're going to show uh, the teaser trailer again. So the set symbol that you will see on all of the Kamigawa cards. Worst right there. set symbol ever. That's it. That's it. It's a set symbol. Uh, now what we're going to do is we are going I to take a look. We we showed a little bit of a Don't know about y'all, but I hate today. that set symbol. Uh, we're going to show that again here, just in case you missed it. And then we're going to maybe Ugh. talk a little bit about uh, the hidden Easter egg in it. We watched this chat. Yo, what was that set symbol? Did they forget that they needed a set symbol for the show today? And they were like, yeah, make one. I'm insulting whatever artist made that and I apologize for that, but I did not like the aesthetic of that. This is all techno music, so I'm just gonna turn it down for a bit. Yo, that, okay. I'm ready to see some cards. What is that set symbol going to look like on a card? It's just going to look like a bunch of squiggly lines. Let's 
So that was the teaser we dropped earlier today, and a bunch of internet sleuths started trying to piece together. If, if you caught it, there's a little glitch in there, and you can see pieces of a card that we are going to show in a moment. Before we do that, uh, we do have some packaging to show that has actually one of the characters from that glitch on it. So let's look at some of the packaging. Not all of it. We're holding some back that has some uh, sort of spoilery stuff, but if you look on the left over there, that character is going to look pretty familiar on the pre-release and draft pack uh, if you were able to piece together the glitch images. And that character is none other than Kaito Shizuki, which if you're looking down at the bottom of the screen... The commander decks for this are hopefully going to be tight. So uh, let's put up Kaito's card. Now we're showing you two versions. There is a third version of that. We'll get to this in a moment, but this is Kaito Shizuki, a black and blue for one blue and a black planeswalker named Kaito. Three loyalty at the beginning of your end step. If Kaito Shizuki enters the battlefield this turn, he phases out. Plus one, draw a card, then discard a card unless you attacked this turn. <laughs> Yo, Minus three, I don't. One, one blue ninja that phase out ability is tight. Can't, creature can't be blocked. Minus seven. You know, mechanically you for the creature, for the character. A creature you control deals combat damage to a player. Search your library for a blue or black creature card. Put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. Mark, this card says ninja on it. It does. <laughs> um, uh, we had been wanting, one of our wish lists for a long time was to do a ninja planeswalker. We thought that would be a really cool idea. And this seemed like the perfect opportunity to do that. And it's a set that has ninjas in it. And it plays really well with ninjas. So for ninja fans out there, there's lots of ninja goodies coming your way. Um, and he's a fun card. We made use of phasing to sort of uh, do a sort of cool, uh, like he's he's hard to kill on your opponent's turn because he's not there. And so there's, there's a lot of fun things with this card. And he's he works really well with the ninja, I'll say that. All right. Uh, how much work did you all put into designing? Because it's got a very different kind of design. Um, where did this phasing thing come from, for example? Well, we've, we've sort of brought phasing back as something that we, um, you know, we do from time to time as a way to sort of... Um, get rid of things that haven't come it's back. It's got a robot raccoon. And so sometimes we flicker slash blink things. Sometimes <laughs> we face things. Uh, Here's Morrow we with the weather. Like, we wanted this Morrow to be with a, the traffic? a character that was hard to attack. From our eye in the sky. Him, you know, we let, let sort of a deck that wanted to attack a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it was just a, it was a neat way to sort of capture this ninja flavor of, you know, hiding in the shadows that you, you can't find them. And we thought it was just a neat, a neat flavorful way to sort of represent our, our ninja planeswalker. All right, and, and Grace, who is Kaito? Because this is a completely new character. Oh man, I love Kaito. So first, uh, there's um, going to be a lot of web fiction where you too can also um, learn about Kaito. But essentially, Kaito was an orphan who grew up in the Imperial Court. Right, thank you for that subscription. And then an accident happened in his childhood involving a man with a metal arm. Um, and that this upset him so much that he left his uh his life behind and went into the uh went into the city and became a ninja trying to search for answers and while he was there he uh had a, another adventure <laughs> which <laughs> is available for you to read right now and he became a planeswalker by coming in contact with himoto the kami of the spark who now lives in um the mechanized uh, origami tanuki robot that he can be seen with yeah ninja frame is we definitely worked with a lot of cultural dope. consultants art to, too um get the, to kind of sorry that's not on my end that's coming from of, their stream um, realism authenticity to kaito's world um and kind of make him a really relatable fun character who yeah even if he doesn't necessarily agree with all the rules is still very likable i really encourage you to read the fiction when it becomes available in january or even now yeah we've got two of the origin stories up for kaito today uh chat wants to know more about this kami of the spark what what's going on with that little pet on his shoulder um so <laughs> Yeah, so essentially, uh, Himoto was um, 
she selected her own name. You can <laughs> read about that in the web fiction. A lot of the answers um, are actually available to you online mm -hmm. right now. And I would heavily encourage you to read them. But she essentially decides that because that Kaito is her friend and she does want to stick with him and help him travel across the multiverse as he's looking for answers. All right. Uh, so now the other thing I want to point out about this is you'll notice that uh, so there were two versions. The of art on the there. ninja frame, though, third version. Uh, our Japanese team is going to be revealing that third version later today. It's super cool. Um, it's got yet another piece of new art um, done by, I believe, a Japanese artist uh, that's, that's pretty well known. And so we'll, uh, we'll see more of that around 8 p.m. tonight from our, our Japanese team. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, but coming up, we still have several Let's go. reviews to go. Um, I will note, chat Card that time. we are going to do, you'll see at the bottom down there, we are going to do a Q&A session at the end. Now, this is a, a bit of a, a preview event, kind of a taste of Kamigawa. Um, so we may not be able to answer everything, but if you want some clarity on something we said earlier, um, or you just have questions about Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, uh, chat, y'all are being that's funny. We'll answer them. Uh, if you put them in chat now, I'm probably going to miss them, but we'll, we'll certainly come back to them. Uh, anyway, let's get to a few pretty, Rosewater's pretty got something. Previews. Wait, before we get a preview, yes. can I tell the story? About you what? Yes, you wanted to tell this story of how the set came to be. Let's hear it, Mark. <laughs> Blake is like, we don't have time I for this. Story time so, with Mark. Uh, <laughs> story time with Mark. So basically, we back in 2004, uh, I was the, our first top-down block we ever did was Champions of Kamigawa. Who's top down? Uh, and that block was not a huge success. From I mean, it you know, there's, for a lot of reasons, it didn't do too well. Um, but over the years, it has grown sort of to become a fan favorite. Um, it was the first place we really blew legends out, and the, the popularity of Commander really made. That's what I was saying. The Maybe there's going to be a big really, really legend sub theme and here. There's just a lot about it that people really liked. So on my blog, my the number one request that I got on my blog was we want to go back to Kamigawa. That was a very frequent, uh, you know, franchise player request. Mark, eighty-two um, percent of people who have voted in our and, poll and agree with you. About you know, if we had to do all over again, if we could start from scratch, could we maybe make a more exciting Japanese world than what we had done in Kamigawa? And so we had talked about maybe we wanted to not do Kamigawa and just do a, a completely different Japanese, you know, inspired world. And so when we started this project, uh, what I had said to everybody was, okay, we're not going to say whether this is Kamigawa or not. We're just going to make a really cool Japanese world, and then down the road we'll figure out whether or not it's Kamigawa. Let's just make a cool Japanese world. So we started on that path, and exploratory um, world building really made this really cool cyberpunk world, and it was, it was really a neat thing to do. Uh, it played into a lot of fun pop cultural Japanese tropes that, that we hadn't done last time we'd been in Kamigawa, and it was a really neat world. But I knew it wanted to be Kamigawa. The audience really wanted Kamigawa, and you know, there's a lot of fun things from. I really like to see some Kamigawa cards. So we were talking in vision design about what what's the conflict of the world. Like, every world wants an inherent conflict. And because it's Japanese-inspired, we wanted a very Japanese, you know, themed conflict. <laughs> and what we realized was there's a perfect one that answered our problem. Because we didn't know, do we do cyberpunk? Do we do original Kamigawa? What do we do? And the answer was both. And here's how we did it. Um, one of the main themes you see in Japanese pop culture is modernity versus tradition. Japanese, they, they love new technology. There's a lot of technology there. But in the same sense, there's a real honor of tradition that goes on. And so there's this conflict in Japanese society of this modernity. Producers are panicked right now. Did Mark run this story by anybody? A lot of Japanese stories and Japanese did, we, pop culture. did anybody and approve this? That are conflict. What if half the set was brand new cyberpunk Japan? And what if half the set was very old? Mr. Much High Life, thank you for the subscription. All, all the hobbies, now. Brady, appreciate yours a while ago. that be the conflict. And then we found a really clever way, which I can't explain today, but... We mechanically identified each part and gave them some mechanical sort of definition. And then the set is... John, that's a good new question. Kamigawa. Would you like the cyberpunk stuff? Half the set is that. <laughs> if you really enjoy Champions of Kamigawa and Old Kamigawa Black, half the set is that. There's a real merit of, you know, the world has some really new and exciting di different things, but also a lot of traditional... The producer's finger was over the Kamigawa, close stream you know, button. Oh, God. Now, Grace, 
Mark mentioned the 1,200 years bit there. How how did you all <laughs> arrive at that sort of timing? Was it, this is where we wanted the story to be set, and that's what the time was? Or, or how did you arrive at that time frame? So that's a long time. That was, yeah, I mean, um, I wasn't there personally for this, but I think it was kind of a decision. I can this one, actually. Oh, oh God. you can? Take it, please. All right, Mark. white boy. Come on in, white boy. Get it done. The original Kamigawa, most people don't realize is it was set in the past. Champions of Kamigawa was not set in present day. I mean, back when, you know, in 2004, it wasn't set in present day. We'd wanted to tell the story and we wanted a certain feel to it. So we specifically set it in the past. And then there's the character that came to Dominaria. So like there's <laughs> elements of that story showed up in mo more modern day. Mark said, um, excuse but the, the, what we're me? right now, the, the Neon Dynasty. Dog name Merle, thanks for that, Sam. And Kamigawa from <laughs> Champ to Kamigawa was, even when we told the story, it was set way in the past. So mm -hmm. that, that's why there's a long gap of time was that Champions was set in the past. It wasn't modern day match even when it came out. Yeah. And uh, Grace, Grace, what was that <laughs> connection? Like, so th this is my prompt. Talk about the Umazawas, um, because that that sort of is sort of the name through line. And for anyone who read now the talk story about the morning, Umazawas, the name gets dropped again. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So obviously, um, if you're familiar with old Kamigawa, <laughs> Toshiro Umazawa was a very notable <laughs> notable figure. Mark Rosewater who, butts um, in in ten. Had influence across Nine. multiple planes. <laughs> Eight. Right. And one of those planes being its home plane of Kamigawa. So Umezawa is a David uh, Daniel. Thank y'all. Like those pe the people who took after him, either his immediate relatives or people who um, just wanted to be like him. Um, they started to their own. Uh, they evolved and like created their own gangs essentially within this uh, mo modern times. Mm. So like they maintained that feeling of tradition by like having the uh the piety and association with each other and with mm -hmm. that name and you can see uh his latest um successor in the web fiction that went up today mm -hmm. working with kaito yeah uh, also from it, it, a magic history standpoint <laughs> uh the first muzawa actually showed up couldn't in stand it the third ever magic couldn't expansion. stand it ladies and, and gentlemen Umezawa was the first muzawa we ever met uh, but he was on Dominaria. Anybody had There's money on story. Mark? I mean, had something Dominaria, else to but, say? Um, we, we met his ancestors in Champions of Kamigawa, and then we, we meet his. Uh, whatever. It was a whole separate uh, game. Lineage later on, so we, we there's a lot of Umazawas that we have met over here. And that Umazawa is connected to Nicol Bolas in a in a really big way, and so it's it's all connected. Um, okay, let's start. Showing some more previews. Thank uh, God. I think it was kind of a preview, but uh, some people pieced it together. New before cards this. before I cringe uh, so into a piece of one coal. Of the dragons. So let's meet <laughs> the first of our dragons. Atsushi, that was crazy. The Blazing Sky. Here we go. A 4 4 legendary creature, Dragon Spirit, for two and that two. That borderless art. Flying and trampled. Oh, buddy. And when Atsushi, the Blazing Sky, dies, choose one. You get to exile the top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. This is what Red does cards. now. Four, Impulse draw and treasure tokens. Good luck, Red players. Treasure token. So, uh, Mark, is that enough, what, Red? Uh, what were you Did you get enough, with, Red with players? And, and the other Impulse draw and treasure tokens so here. One of the challenges of the set has been we wanted to make as much throwbacks as we could to original Kamigawa, but one of the problems with original Kamigawa, you know. It, the mechanics were not the high point of, of original Kamigawa. And so there's not a lot of things we wanted to bring back, but we, I kind of like really this said, card. What are the cool things? What were the neat mechanical things that original Kamigawa black did do? And one of which was the dragon cycle that there is a cycle of these dragons. I kind of like this card they died. They had a powerful effect. So we knew we wanted to bring them back. We wanted to update them. So what we did is once again, you have these powerful dragons that, that all fly and um, when they die, but instead of one effect, you now have a choice between two effects. So it's it's bringing it back, but putting a, a, a little twist on it. All right. And, and Grace, right. It, it looks like mm -hmm. um, the art on the extended version is special as well. Um, yeah, you could see uh, some of the some of the uh, different cities within um, a, another location, Sokenzan. Um, 
in the background there. I'm pretty sure that this was actually painted traditionally, like with oil paint, mm. um, which is part of the thing that blows my mind <laughs> with this specific card. <laughs> but yeah, Atsushi is the direct descendant of Ryusei, who um, started that plan to bring all the dragons back mm -hmm. through rebirth, which is a major, which go, uh, connects into the mechanic of um, essentially releasing power when dying. Mm -hmm. And into our at sushi means into our even thick larger in Japanese. The tradition versus modernity. Are you screwing it's with like me, or is that true? A cycle of death and rebirth is part of the advancement of society. Okay, and and Mark, this seems like a does that sushi mean thick in Japanese? Anyway. Is this part of a cycle? yeah? Goldspan's better, but this is cool. It is part of a cycle. Uh, <laughs> we couldn't do a cycle of dragons. I mean, we couldn't do dragons without doing a cycle of dragons. So yeah, mm -hmm. this is part of a cycle. All right, that all worked. They all die and you have two <laughs> Thick the blazing sky? Right, come on. Thing. Actually, it means... Oh, come on. All right. Oh, check uh, out my cool hat. Next up, let's show off... Are you talking about Atsugo Atlanta Braves champions? Devouring Chaos. We're going to have a lot to unpack Hit it, this one. Wait, First, this is a... Card. It is a 4-4 four, four legendary... Hit it, Sugo? Isn't Ogre that a Demon. thing? That was uh, a thing. Hit it, Sugo, Devouring Chaos, costs three to black. It has black, sacrifice a creature to scry two... And then for two red and tap it, you can exile the top part of your library. You may play this card this turn. When you exile a non-land card this way, uh, Hidetsugu deals damage equal to the exiled card's mana value to any target. Um, so first of all, Grace, tell us who is Hidetsugu and why should we care? <laughs> so this is in fact the same Hidetsugu from 1200 years ago. Uh, unlike the dragons who were reborn and the Umazabas who are descendants or successors of sets the people that you know from previous sets, <laughs> the, uh, Hidetsugu actually um, consumed the Oni that he worshipped, hence giving him the uh, ogre demon creature. I like pay a black sack a creature without having to tap. A That's potentially pretty himself. cool. And so now he's still running around causing the same kind of chaos. Yeah, I'm not feeling the art on this one, unfortunately. He was known for even back then. Y'all, right. here, I'm going to hide this and, for a second, but behind me, look at this. The, what we're calling the soft glow treatment on the right. That's soft one of the glow. fun treatments that you're going to see throughout the set. There are a number of cards that have that treatment. Uh, Hidetsugu has a special treatment, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but first, Mark, tell us about the mechanics on Hidetsugu. Well, like I said, I, I, I can't talk too much about uh, this card is made to be synergistic with other things going on in the set. And um, one of the things that we wanted to do when we came back to Kamigawa was um, I had asked my blog, like, if we return to Kamigawa, what's the most important yeah, thing? As a commander, uh, he could be cool. The answer was the, the races, all the creature types that the cha uh, champions of Kamigawa had sort of introduced to the game and all, all the cool stuff that we had done. And so demons were part of that. Um, a lot of your favorites are back. So the things you loved about original Kamigawa, mm, a lot of those races neon are back. lights, yeah, soft glow. You'll see, we did a lot of fun things with them. Duh. But one of the things that we were trying really hard to balance is take things that were lovable that people loved about Kamigawa, original Kamigawa, but then sort of, it might look pretty cool in things. foil. And like, once you see the whole set, this card has a lot of nice synergies. It's part of a cool draft strategy. And there's a lot of things going on that you can do with this card. And, um, the legendary theme was an important part of original Kamigawa. So it, there is a, there's a legendary theme that runs through this stat, and there's a, there's a decent amount of legends. Um, mm -hmm. We knew people would expect some fun legends. Here's a good example of a fun legend to build around. Uh, and so, you know, the, the, the set is really trying to marry a lot of the lovable old things of Kamigawa with a lot of new things that we can do. And so there's a lot of mixing of old and new. That's the theme, old and new mixing together. <laughs> Um, all right, so Hidetsugu also has a special uh, set of cards that are we're calling uh, Neon Ink. So there are four of these. This is only for Hidetsugu. Hey, jump into our Discord. I just so dropped the link in the, the chat. If you're these. not in our I'm Discord, gonna, you should be. I'm going to read this because there's a lot going on here. Uh, so there's these four uh, cards. They are a Neon Ink treatment. It's exclusive to oh, the variants. It uses a new to magic foiling process that is meant to make the card feel like it's actually glowing neon. A new foil so, process? Here's how you get each of these. This cards. one bends uh, forward instead of backwards. They are pretty rare. So fewer <laughs> than one percent 
of collector boosters. These are uh, three of these are collector booster exclusives. The blue, the green, the red are collector booster exclusives. Fewer than bro. Variants are awesome, are but too much of anything is bad. Card. Too much Their of a good thing is bad. Are basically left to right. So blue is the most likely to find. Down to red is the least likely to find. And, and the this, the colors have rarities with each one. Uh, starting there. The yellow oh, one God. is actually going to be available as a promotional card through WPN Premium local game stores. So yeah, Matthias, if you uh, rub them all one, together, it turns into a rainbow. Red one through a collector boosters. Local game stores are going to have promos in the yellow. Uh, and, and these are really cool in person. Uh, I don't think I like do. this. My the, gut reaction is no. Feel on the screen and look we talk about variants very cool. like every Again, video this on this only channel for these uh special it's not like we hate them versions but they will be available in collector boosters all right gosh uh, looking at like box now, toppers what we're gonna do so we have a little now bit of time, this so we are now where we are answer some questions um and maybe if someone asks the right question it'll result in another preview um so i'm gonna try to keep up with chat chat's moving pretty quick right now it would help if you tag it at magic with your question uh we are only answering questions about kamigawa neon dynasty at this <laughs> point uh, i know you all have lots of questions about lots of things uh but we're gonna oh my god chat's moving really fast um we'll try to answer as many questions as we can i saw one that said hi um okay what do y'all all right what well, do y'all think do we keep do we keep going on this q a like, did we get everything we're going to get? X. We're probably not going to be able to answer those questions. So, I guess all of them. All Maybe. Of them. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Um, okay, here's a question we might be able to answer. Aye, aye, aye. Um, what was the, and, and this is for both of you, what was the hardest part about returning to Kamigawa? I can go first. Sure. Um, sure. One of the challenges mechanically is Dude, this is... original Kamigawa is not the high point of magic design. Uh, there were a lot of mistakes made. This is funny. It's very parasitic set. And there's a lot of things. So in trying to do the new set, we, we did what we can to sort of get elements of the old set. But we're going to wrap back around to these cards. Brought back. I'm not saying none, but uh, there's a lot more of us... Um, riffing off ideas and concepts and cycles like there's a lot of you'll see old kamigawa mechanically in the new kamigawa but it it, it is not there was not a lot of things to bring back whole cloth um so there's definitely a lot of inspirations and a lot of things you'll see this inspired that um but it was a really tricky set in that there wasn't just all these mechanics to bring back because there were a lot of challenges with some of the mechanical definition in original kamigawa all right grace we have a actually kind of like a similar challenge on the creative side um i think our biggest challenge was like balancing that old new effect and we kind of solved that by essentially asking ourselves this aspect of the original kamigawa how would it have evolved over this time period how would that kami magic still be there would this kami still be around doing the same thing and so we ended up being able to um, put in a lot of references to characters and creatures from uh, that people would have been familiar with. And it's kind of like revisiting your old Fewer than 1% like, of, of collector what boosters? To, what they're up to now. Um, and this gave us also a way to introduce people to Kamigawa by adding... The move is always like a make a new rarity. ...understanding of Japanese popular culture as well. So um, actually the old versus new became old and new to actually create something even cooler. So these have rarity uh, have within a themselves. And according to Hipsters Mark. of the Coast reporting uh, here, question from Mark, doesn't Kaido's new path fewer than 1% of, of collector booster can't be attacked if we can put Kaido back up on the screen, Sean. I mean, I, 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 part of the idea is we wanted to make a, a, a planeswalker that worked a little bit differently. Yeah, yes, hmm. we made a planeswalker that sort of helps with one of the general weaknesses of planeswalkers, but hey, you know, we make a lot of planeswalkers, so... Well, we if, and if, that, that, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, he only phases out... Mark Rosewater, defensive over Kaito. The battle. I could be wrong about this. It doesn't trigger enter the battlefield. <laughs> so he only phases correct. out one time. The turn you cast him, yeah. 
he'll phase out, but then after that, that doesn't trigger again, uh, unless you find a way to blink him or something like that. You're, you're, you're correct, right? That, 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 the card only makes it phase out one time, mm -hmm. but other cards could help you fa phase him out, because obviously there's other ways. Is that how that reads? Not stuff. to question the dude who designed the card. Uh, next question, probably from Mark. Uh, does this set have more legends than the average premiere set? Uh, it is above average on legendary creatures because there Figures. is a legendary theme in the set. Yes. Okay, okay, so there is a legendary theme. Uh, when do we find out how the yellow Hidetsugu will specifically be distributed? Should we look out for a WPN article? So there's actually on uh, dailymtg.com at the conclusion of this show, uh, there's going to be the, the language I was parroting and reading a little bit came directly from that article. So there is going to be an article that talks about how all the uh, the neon ink ones are available, uh, as well as some. Brandon, other thank you for that subscription. We have covered or are about to cover. Um, do, 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 do. All right. How about how about this question? Someone asked the right question. Yeah, it's it's time. It's time. Are there going to be full art lands? Grace, are there going to be full art lands? Ah, <laughs> uh, Blake, I guess. Maybe we should show them. So. We, I think we can show them. All right. Oh, so. so pretty. Okay, here so we go. Right. These are so gorgeous. Like, I freaked out whenever I saw them. So, as I mentioned before, we worked with Kogaru to um, work with a lot of Japanese artists. These full so art lands. One of these things that we worked with them on was. Marcelo, thank you for that subscription. Lands for you. Mm -hmm. And they. Oh, wait, are hang on. These are dope. The a style of painting as well as our old versus new theme so we have one cycle of the traditional beautiful natural world uh like uh what is it natural landscapes mm -hmm. of all of kamigawa and on the others we have the different urban centers that represent each of the colors mm -hmm. so we just saw ganjo and all right okay um, hang on so Ken's on. Hang Iguana. on. These are going to um, look cool in foil. And because they're These are so gonna look beautiful, dope. the art takes up like the vast, like it's 90% of a card. Oh, it does. Yeah. It sells the whole thing for you, basically. <laughs> these are Dude, just absolutely These beautiful, look like. I love them so much. These are kick ass. Yeah, the story I love to tell is when Chris Rush, the, the artist who did um, Black Lotus and, and All right. Early Magic, they nailed these. The they nailed land, these. And the response was why would anybody ever want those? Oops. This was correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are amazing. So there's two of each. Um, okay, and then I've seen a couple comments slash questions about how you get these. So you can get them in draft set and collector boosters in both <laughs> yeah, traditional seriously. foil and in non-foil. So in draft and set boosters, one out of uh, roughly one out of every thirty or one third of draft and set boosters will contain one of these lands, and then every collector booster is going to contain one foil of one of these. So yes, you you can absolutely get okay. These in, so basically. the foil ones will be pretty available from people cracking open a lot of collector boosters of this product if it sells well. Yeah. If the rest of the set's cool, the, the basic lands okay. themselves won't sell the set, but Thanks to the that'll be a nice little throw in on the collector booster question. packs. <laughs> Getting one of these in foil. All right, let's see what other questions. Um, these are also see, looking like soft glow treatment. What kind of cards get you know that five treatment? to ten dollar uh, foils? A variety of cards. It, it's not a um specific category there are a couple one of per booster collector booster categories. a third of all set and draft uh, boosters not foil frame on and that is one of the there's frames. like two the to four of each one uh was applied to a lot of cool cards um all right grace this is a question for you um Let's see. So you, you can talk about uh, kind of any sort of older lore, probably. So I love the lore of Kamigawa. Uh, Kitsune and Natsumi are two some of, of my each color. Tribes. I know yeah, you can't so share much, those are going to be expensive. Share any world building trivia about them? Any little snippet that you can maybe share for people? 
I can tell you that you're going to see a variety of uh, of the peoples of Kamigawa. They're still around. Then you'll definitely be introduced to them very soon. Mm -hmm. um, for all the people asking about samurai, you'll just have to wait and see. Uh, will there be other cards with the Who knows? Who, kn who knows? <laughs> Could be anything. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Will there be other cards with the neon ink treatment? No, the neon ink treatment is specifically for that hit at Sugu. Uh, da, 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 da. What? Mm -mm. So that's only that one? anything related to Kamigawa Commander? Wait, 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 uh, wait, 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 they're testing this, from that today. chat, there are this is a test, and uh, we will be, we'll see more we of this in the debut, future, we'll be showing off those face cards and kind of doing our normal preview cycle with those showing off the full decks uh, after the full set is previewed. This is what they were talking about. Yeah, the, the same people that do, that do the decks, that, the decks for the set, and there's, lot, there's lots of cool things we can't tell you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh let's see i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna race through a couple of these and just give the the answer we're gonna give for a lot of these how many alternate frames are in the set you'll have to wait and see uh, uh why is uh oh, let's see will there be reprints of cards from classic kamigawa you'll have to wait and see um ba -ba 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 -ba. are we getting the tanuki as its own creature or is it purely for the planeswalker you'll have to wait and see are there shrines you'll have to wait and see okay I'm going to get repetitive. But What's the point? The of get repetitive. Um, which, totally get. We want to see, but let's see if we can. Are there more yeah, previews there? Like, uh, yeah, please. Of us are more. Sure. Um, we were well aware when making the set that there are a lot of fans of original Kamigawa. And so, and the, a lot of the people working on the set were fans of original Kamigawa. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel, who's like the biggest Kamigawa fan, I think, in all of R&D, worked on the set. And, and Possibly the, the world, set, yeah. Think. Um, anyway, the, not everything will be here, but a lot of cool things. We definitely, if you love elements, we did a lot to sort of make nods and Easter eggs. And there are, there's a lot packed in this set for fans of original Kamigawa. And mm -hmm. by the way, if the, the other part of the set that we should talk about too, is, uh, the sort of the modern part of the set, we really dived into, uh, pop, like Japanese pop culture tropes, things that we just didn't do last time when we were in Kamigawa. So there. Like if you stereotypes, like that'll be Japanese great. Pop culture and original Kamigawa didn't do a lot of that. The other half of the set does do that. So there's the just like there's a lot of cool stuff for the old time Kamigawa fans. There's a lot of really cool stuff for the hey, I love cyberpunk. Or there's a lot of themes that I love woven through Japanese stories. Yeah, that we're I would gonna. Like to see. So we we're have we're gonna too. yeah, we're gonna definitely dive into that. So the, let's put the uh, dates back up on the screen, producer Sean, if we can. Uh, so that, that creative round table on January 11th, if, if you're interested in any of that, any of the behind the scenes world building, yeah, if you've never for if you haven't Kamigawa, become a part of our discord, together, uh, we're going to just drop that link right there. Jump into our discord. About, we'll be talking uh, about this for the rest of the day that are still on Kamigawa or gone. A lot of that's going to be answered. Then the short histories will work through a lot of that. The fiction <laughs> obviously will as well. Uh, so it. definitely mark your calendars if the story and the lore and the world okay. of Kamigawa, which is really resonant, uh, resonates with you. Um, I do, let's see, there are also a couple questions about the Ukiyo-e uh, basic lands. And so we'll just clarify a couple things on that. Uh, will we get the English basics in English boosters too? Yes. So these are in, um, they are, they have Japanese on them. But they are the version of these lands that will show up in all language boosters. So whatever language booster you have, you will get those versions. Makes sense. Uh, so Makes are they sense. full art only in Japanese? Yes, the, the writing on them is only in Japanese, but you can get them in any language booster. The, the writing is part of the art, by the way, just to be more clear. Yep. That the, 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 the words of the name of the card in Japanese are literally part of the art. They're not a separate element of the card. Yep. Um, I think we can answer this one, Grace, because um, it, it is part of that conflict between the old and the new, and, and it's a question a lot of people have. How does magic work on Kamigawa? Um, I see that there's a lot of high-tech simulation effect. So can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about the relation between technology and magic on Kamigawa? So basically, um, as the years progressed, the... Um, 
things kind of got more democratized. So essentially magic used to be restricted to Kami, right? And as time moved forward, um, people developed ways to access magic without having to go through these Kami and magic became part of one's everyday life. Like that essentially there is no technology in Kamigawa without magic, which is personally why I absolutely love this plane is because that fantasy core is still there. Like the technology is not like electricity or something. It's magic that's driving it underneath the hood. Mm -hmm. Right. In, in a lot of stories, uh, you'll see technology and magic being opposites of each other. That is not the case yeah. here. Our technology is run by magic. It's not, and it's not fighting with, with magic. It is, it is, comes from magic. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, are there any Japanese pack exclusive cards like Planeswalkers and War? You'll have to wait and see. I don't want to keep saying that, um, but I do want to seem like you do. Question. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, I'll answer this question. Very Can you good. explain why we are now 1,200 years in the uh, from the previous coming on and not the before mentioned 10,000 years in the future? So, way back when, when we we first mentioned Kamigawa, we said 10,000, and it was just a mistake. It was it was just straight up an error that we we put out in the public. 1,200 years is the uh, correct. <laughs> <laughs> distance between when we were last on Kamigawa what? and we're now on Kamigawa in story terms. Although it feels like it in real world terms because I'm old. Yeah. Just to stress, this is modern day Kamigawa. Like mm -hmm. this, uh, uh, and um, <laughs> the, the, hopefully you understand there have been a lot of questions online about we've seen characters from Kamigawa, for example, in other places and they don't necessarily look like the cyberpunk version, but that's because they might be from the traditional version. You know, the, the, the Kamigawa is not all the cyberpunk. There's a mm -hmm. lot of the traditional part there as well. So if you saw characters that are from Kamigawa and they looked more like tradition than from, than, you know, um, cyberpunk, that's why they're from that part of the world. Yep. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of blanket uh, answer all of the questions about the, the preview schedules. When are we going to see more cards? Uh, the debut date. January 27th is uh, the day you want to circle on your calendar if you want to see new previews. Although, you know what? The holidays are coming up. We like you all. Maybe we'll do a little something. Maybe we'll do a little something. Um, let's see. Okay. I, I, I they got to get some streamers to help them to out here. That, that we, that we actually <laughs> they got to hire well, some they're, streamers. They're great questions. You know, there, there's a, there's People that are decent at filling the time. Who really care about Kamigawa. I'm sure this is a harder job than it looks like. It. Um, and I just, I don't want he said, to keep saying. kind of doing that job. Um, so throw me a question, like, I'm really good at not answering questions. Ah. <laughs> uh, Actually, no. You know what? You can't answer, you can't answer this question. Uh, let's put Hidetsugu up on the screen. Uh, it's interesting Hidetsugu can sacrifice itself. It seems weird that a demon would do that. Can you discuss the design choice here? Mark, you may or may not know the answer to that, but Hidetsugu uh, I mean, can... Well, one of the things that we generally... like Normally, if you have to sacrifice a creature and it enhances the creature, we tend to say another creature because there's no reason other than to sacrifice for the sake of sacrificing it. Um, but this is a scry ability, so there might be a reason you'd want to sacrifice it me mechanically, that you'd want to sacrifice it to itself so that you could do the scry ability. Um, and so in this particular case, we lean toward mechanically gameplay, the better play. Um, would a demon sacrifice himself? I don't know. Demons do all sorts of things. Um, but it was better <laughs> gameplay. Yeah. Head designer of MTG, I mean, everybody. narratively, he ate himself, kind of. Like, what he is now is because part of him ate another part of him earlier. So... <laughs> Kind there of works. Okay, so you can't <laughs> end creatively. It's good. <laughs> um, here, we can answer this question. Uh, Mark, will cards from the new set play well with cards from the old set, for example, in a cube? Uh, I mean, there are things that will play together. I, I, I do want to stress to the audience, this is not... A lot of times we revisit worlds and it's like exactly like we come back to Zendikar or Innistrad or Ravnica and they play really, really similar to what it was when we were first there. This is not really that. 
Not that there's not overlapping themes. Not that you can't combine the two sets and have it play nicely. There are definitely themes that overlap. But this set is a little more a new thing with touches of mechanical elements that you can see the old set. So there are 100% decks you can build between the two, but it has to do with certain themes. Not every theme got carried over from the old set. So, yes, yeah, some themes will play together, some won't. Um, I, I just want the audience to understand this is not <laughs> this is not like we revisited Kamigawa and it's exactly Kamigawa mechanically. There's a lot different mechanically. Key to later. All right. Um, Somebody was just like, Mark can just yell at his laptop camera. Question. That'll be fine uh, audio. If you have a card you really love in this set, you don't have to say what it is. I'm like, I'm going to give oh, a non-answer, and it's like, yeah, it's the one that I set as my work computer wallpaper. There you go. <laughs> okay, so my favorite is there's a card I made in original Champions of Kamigawa block that we reference, and I love the original card that I made, and I love the reference. Oh, so, now someone's going back through your old articles to look at, like, what did Mark, well, what did Mark I, I design in the fun, old... So have fun. <laughs> you know what? If, if you can find that and you can figure out what the new card is, you know what? Congratulations. <laughs> you deserve it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. I, there's, there's someone who keeps asking about um, the increase <laughs> in the rarity of the lands, and I just want to clarify, it's not... So you get one of the Ukiyo-A lands uh, in uh, roughly one-third of uh, draft and set boosters. Not one per... There is a land slot. You'll get basic yeah. land in the two out of three that aren't that. Yeah, and those basic lands are, are gorgeous as well. They're just in kind of a more normal style. Um, oh, uh, Mark, when is your teaser for the set coming out? Uh, my teaser will be on January 24th. It's a Monday, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm still writing it, but uh, there's a lot of fun things to tease in the set, so I'm, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Um, are there any previews that uh, have mechanics on them? So we very purposely didn't show anything uh, right now with set mechanics because with set mechanics, we then have to like explain the mechanics and talk about how the mechanic works. And we're going to do all of that in preview season on January 27th. So definitely be sure to tune right. in then. There are uh, mechanics. So what you're saying is wait there wait are mechanics. Wait. There <laughs> mechanics <laughs> confirmed. I, I, here, I'll even tease one thing. There are both new and returning mechanics, I will say that. What? Bushido! Uh, let's, let's get confusing see. up uh, in here. So there are no another question. Let's so throw some confusing mechanics yeah, in here. Which are very pretty, by the way. Yeah. Uh, we're not showing them today, but we will show them eventually. Uh, let's see. This is a long question. So um, while Vic while is reading... I just want to stress, by the way, having seen the art for this set, the, the oh my, the world team did such an amazing job. This set looks so beautiful. We're just giving you a little sampling. So when you see all the set, it's just, it's so gorgeous. This set is really, really pretty. Yep. Um, okay, so Grace. Mark wants to uh, stress that. You said this is current Kamigawa. So this is the version of Kamigawa that Tamiyo is native to, correct? Correct. Great. Yes, this, this version of Kamigawa is... Uh, temporally in line with most of our other points. Okay. okay, okay. And, and yes, Tem Temio is from Kamigawa. Yeah. Yeah. N now Kamigawa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She's not a, like a time traveler. <laughs> that would add a completely new dimension to her character. Um, are there going to be two commander decks or four? There will be two. What will they be? Uh, <laughs> Uh, Grace, uh, if, if you can answer this one, uh, they're asking how, so we know it's 1,200 years after the previous Kamigawa, and it's in line with our current planes, but now they're asking you to get real specific. How long after War of the Spark is this set? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm really bad at math, <laughs> and I can't answer that. The answer is not long, though, right? We're yeah. talking like... <laughs> Years, not decades, probably. And like, I can yeah. at least confirm yeah. that, you know, the people that were alive during that would, like, be alive now. Yeah. But exact number of years, like, months, seconds, like, 
somebody else on the team handles those calculations. <laughs> it, it is years, not decades. How about that? Yeah. 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 Um, okay, here's here's one. Uh, what is each of your favorite Kamigawa races? So, uh, you know, I, I know there are a lot of rat fans in chat. Personally, I, I like... I do like this. All right, yeah, Mark. I, I'm I'm a moonfolk. <laughs> I'm a moonfolk guy. Grace, y'all make me pick. Yeah, <laughs> pick, <laughs> pick like, your pick. It's like you y'all are making me pick children here. <laughs> um, I guess probably the Kitsune, um, just because that's kind of like the spirit that like when I was a kid I grew up with and I thought was the coolest when I was like four. Um, followed by the Orochi because the like there's a lot of like snake legends mm -hmm. that i really jived with as a kid what's your of, like tight that'd be cool if they yeah introduce more of those i uh, think the nizumi i like the nizumi. nizumi yeah nizumi are pretty cool uh a lot of questions about the wanderer and i'll sum this up sum them up with this question can we talk about the wanderer no uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> not to not no. today not today. Um, let's see. Uh, interesting question. I don't know if we have an answer for it, but I'll read it because it's interesting for you, Grace. Uh, it's a lore question. Is Kamigawa now the most technologically advanced plane in the multiverse? Mm, probably? I guess it depends on, like how Mark you Rosewater. technologically advanced, right? Because Five, if you think of Kaladesh, like, four, they have a three, lot, like, Aether has two, given them the ability to do a one, lot. Like, is technologically advanced mean, like, mistimed access it. to technology mistimed to common it. people? Or, like, how digital did things get? It is the most, like, I'd say it's the most technologically similar to our world, but are we that advanced? That's like a deep existential question that I'd rather not go <laughs> Mark, to right here now. he comes. He can't hold it back any longer. That was there are also a lot of worlds we haven't visited yet, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. Oh. Oh. I will say in an alternate multiverse, there is a world that has uh, spaceships with a carnival on them. <laughs> now he's just pumping the unset. You know what excited about. No, I was just um, pumping the unset. Uh, interesting question for Grace. We are we are almost out of time. I'm going to try to get to a couple more questions since we've got good questions. Y'all, we're only holding on here to see if there's any more cards that they previewed there in the insta. So, so, now, looking at Kamigawa from the present time, the War of the Kami was 1,200 years we're ago. We're stuck in so this. is that viewed in the present time as myth or real history? It is viewed as real history, for sure. Um, because, like... In the from the lens of the Kamigawa and like uh letting them talk about the lore a little bit more real people like they exist. this is the same kind of are thing that are, happened with uh the Kaldheim set like, you remember right before christmas last year we got a little sneak preview of it that's basically what we're getting here today we've gotten some pretty cool stuff some art the lands i think that's a really cool thing to to think about talk about this weird thing with the hidetsugu is going to be have five alternate versions kind of like the reminds me of teferi the from the core set see some questions about ninjas we're not going to get into that except for confirming that there are them um if you love ninjas you should like this set How spec that? ninjas yep. <laughs> um, ninja singles on the rise for more previews i don't have any i don't have any more previews not today, anyway. Oh, I guess we're done. As far as seeing uh, new cards. Ba, 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 ba. All right. I think we are going to say that that is it. Uh, there are a lot of great questions in here that we just unfortunately cannot answer today. Uh, if you want answers to a lot of your questions, uh, some of them may be found in the Magic Fiction. That is on dailymtg.com right now. So we've got Kaito's origin story there, but it's not just about Kaito. It starts unraveling the modern world of Kamigawa and, and hinting at what's We're going to take a look there. at some of these other cards um, here before we some get on with our nights. Appreciate everybody so hanging definitely out. Definitely go check that out. Uh, there's another article on Daily MTG that's going to talk through uh, the previews that we talked about today. 
where to find them, how to find them, that sort of deal, give you a little taste, a little bit more information. And then for all of the information uh, on January 11th, here, let's put the dates back up on the screen, screen one more time before we go. Uh, we are going to host a uh, creative roundtable online, so you'll be able to watch uh, some of the minds behind the world of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty talk about no its car creation. There are no ninjas on the so reserve answer list. Answer a lot of these questions that many of you have been putting in chat about the world, about the characters, uh, about everything going on. Doctor Feel Good. And then between a good then question, and though. the 21st, I had to check. we're going to unravel a lot of what has happened between the original Kamigawa and now. So you'll, you'll get a sense of the transition in time. Uh, we're gonna have one to two stories, uh, short stories each day. And then on January 24th through the 26th, we are gonna hit uh, the story of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. So you'll find out exactly what happens in- Most expensive event. ninjas. And then previews start in- We got Type Ninja, January sorted price. Seventh, when we debut with kind of our normal yeah. debut Sakashima student and ink eyes and looks like this version of ink eyes oh no so ink eyes is pretty expensive across the board today 20 bucks uh, thank you grace thank you mark for joining us and uh answering as many questions as you could and showing off uh some some of the awesome stuff we've still got a lot more yeah i mean pack. they're not uh, super expensive for in. seventh this most expensive ninja and commanders show. five it's bucks less than five bucks we'll that's not terrible January. Stay tuned for that and have a good week. All right, let's see if they just cut the thing off or if they do a little. No, nope, that's it. All right. Well, we got some cool stuff. Let's take a look at what we did get. Okay. So let's take a look at this. I was just looking at the ninjas. I know some people were talking about the prices on ninjas. Um, you know, the top eight, the number eight is in the $3 range. That's actually not terrible. This obviously is type ninja. There are some ancillary cards for ninjas. Let's see if anything says, oh, ninja. No. All these are type ninja. That's not, that's not... Sure can is super cheap. Unblocked unblocked attacking ninjas you control have lifelink. Okay, so this is a one printing card. So I would look at maybe foils of this. Foils of this could be a good grab. I'm not sure what price the foils are at right now. Higure. Yeah, yeah. So this is the kind of one where you've got your your most recent printing was in 2012 you know ninjutsu if they bring ninjutsu back when it deals combat damage to a player you can search your library for a ninja card reveal it put it into your hand this is the kind of card that they could reprint so easily in this so easily in this yeah mh1 foils of ninja stuff um set mh1 type ninja sorted by price yeah i mean so this is a two dollar 44 cent card straight uh but foil cards like ingenious infiltrator single print uncommon foils that are single printings those are the kind of targets those are the kind of targets we make shorts about Bet you we see Ingenious, Ingenious Infiltrator on a 15 second finance in two months. Maybe less. Website is this? This is Scryfall. I use Scryfall for pretty much all of my uh, MTG searching. Not sponsored by anything, but it's just a dope website. Yeah, MTG means that's also a good a good point the hype right now is going to make the prices go you probably wanted to get in really easily or really early yeah i want to see and that's that's the point any of these huge reprint targets i mean ingenious infiltrator could be reprinted yeah i think this could be in a standard set it's maybe a little too powerful at uncommon but still 
you know so you're looking for foils you're looking for these to you really wanted to have like all your ingenious infiltrator foils sitting on your desk ready for this video today and then flip them into the hype over the next couple weeks sakashima student yeah that's one that i would hope that hope it gets a reprint because this one up at the 50 range i think i've made i think i've made videos about this card before this is one where you probably want to I mean, it's hard to say. There's two schools of thought. You could part with these right before the set comes out, right before previews start, when they're going to be at their highest. If they get a reprint. If they don't get a reprint, they probably go up a little bit even from there. Because you know there's going to be a Ninja Commander. You know there's going to be a Ninja Commander, like Will Helt was to zombies. We're probably going to get a Ninja Commander that does the same thing to a lot of the tribal pieces and gives the tribe new pieces. Samurai El Mucho Sexy. Nice name, by the way. They did mention Samurais, but it was just Blake saying, we'll have to wait and see if we see Samurai. Ingenious Infiltrator. I mean, it just got printed. Is that what you're saying? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, you're saying the old frame. So there's a good target. I, th uh, this doesn't really count as a huge reprint for me, but it is a reprint. Um, this is the kind of one where, you know, the foil edged of these. Maybe that's what you grab. Absolutely. Yeah, Bushido's not exactly the one we're, the one we're looking for. Sakashima student getting a reprint, though. It's a pretty powerful card. Gotta say, it's a pretty powerful card. This is the kind of one that I would see maybe not being in the standard set, but being in a secret layer. One of those auxiliary, because you know the secret layer, they're going to have at least one or two. One's going to be like the Kamigawa lands, and one's going to be ninjas or something. Yeah, Joshua, those are the ones that we, um, I can't remember if that video is out yet. I think we have a video coming out on Sunday. I think we have a video coming out on Sunday. No, no, no. We just had a video come out that discussed the legendary lands from the original Kamigawa run. Yeah. I mean, if you want, it's it, that's, we see him in a secret layer. Pretty sure we see him in a secret layer. I'm going to drop it one more time. Hey, if you're not a member of our discord, you should be come and hang out with us. We'll be discussing all of this Kamigawa business. And there's a ton of good MTG Finance and EDH discussion in there. Go join our Discord. Just drop the link in the chat box. I think that we caught I think that we caught some pretty cool stuff today. I mean, this in and of itself, for me, I love these. I think this is probably the, probably the highlight of the stream for me is these lands i love these we have seen some new art for kodama matthias sorry if i'm pronouncing that wrong we saw some kodama art earlier today let me see let me see where it's at where it's at we saw this I mean, tell me that's not Kodama, right? This looks pretty tight. I think this is my favorite piece of art we've seen so far. This looks insane. I love this like villainous vibe. This guy's got with his like neon pets. I want to know who this is. I want to build. I'm hoping this is a playable commander. Yeah, Brody. I the lands are so tight. Is 
Is that sushi? Is that sushi right there? I mean, we got some cool stuff. Was hoping for some mechanics today. Didn't get some mechanics. We did see key art. We did see art rather for Bosiju, and we saw some for um, Iganjo. Iganjo. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Seed of the Empire. So we will have a legendary land cycle. It would seem. We got to see Kaido Kaito Shizuki, our little phasing planeswalker that loots. Does a little, uh, oh, what's that card? Draw two, discard two, unless you've attacked. Yeah, that could be Satoru. That could be Umazawa. That would be tight. That bad guy art I liked. A little Umazawa art on there. That's pretty tight. That's pretty tight. This is... This is maybe that we saw some legendary creatures. We saw some really tight art on that sushi. Chat is trying to trick me into thinking that at sushi is Japanese for thick. <laughs> it's a funny joke. We got hit at Sugu. We saw this and then the weirdest thing. This single card, this single card in the entire set is getting neon ink treatments. So they're very clearly testing something on us that they're like, let's do this more in future sets. They tried, they tried for the Teferi set. If you remember the core set with Teferi, they had all those different versions of time displaced Teferi. And I don't think they were really received well. I don't think they were received poorly but nobody cared because honestly they didn't look different enough this to me seems like they're trying it out again different way more thematic to the set more noticeable and a very clear like they said okay so these are apparently from hipsters of the coast reporting you can see up top of me apparently these are going to only be in fewer than one percent of collector boosters past that they have a rarity within themselves the yellow is going to be the most commonly less than one percent of the time found in a collector booster and the red slash pink one uh it is it does say neon ink red so we're gonna go with red the red is the rarest of these four color versions that are going to be in fewer than one percent <sighs> what the hell Sir Luscious actually sushi food tokens that would be really tight I really like that idea surely right have some maki in there get a little sushi get a little maki get some rolls going hell yeah now I want sushi we gotta go to sushi now everybody meet me at the sushi bar this is the I mean look Wait, yellow is WP and LGS exclusive promo, not in packs. This is what I'm talking about, dude. This is what I'm talking about. I just, I, I don't, I don't care. I don't, this is so much. Kakoshi, thoughts on the theme pack product? I'm not sure what you're talking about, pal. Did I miss something? Oh, well, here's this. If y'all want to see this. Chen, the answer is yes. <laughs> I, I, you gotta, Corey, I don't know. You, we're going to have to, this is going to be a decision once they're in hand, but the neon ink frame is just for Hidetsugu. To my understanding, 
it's just for Hitatsugo. Kikoshi, tell me what you're talking about with the two theme packs and the seal product. Oh, oh. You're talking about the product page? Did they get a clip of that? No. These are more high res. I'm looking for that product picture, Kikoshi. I don't see it. They're doing promo of, promos of Fateful Absence. That's actually... That's actually interesting to note. Yeah, from the stream. I know what you're talking about. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in here real fast. We're not gonna watch this again, but I am gonna scrub through. I know they put the product page up early. Here we go. Here we go, and then I missed it. There we go. Two theme boosters. Oh yeah, the characters on there. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. No, Zaki, they, they said that Hidetsugo is going to be the only one to get that. Looks like we got a vehicle up here on the collector booster box. But yeah, I mean, theme boosters are, theme boosters are just something that I've not been a fan of. You know, I see people, you know, it's the kind of product where you don't necessarily want a theme booster, but there's going to be, you know, family members or friends that know you like MTG, want to get you a gift for whatever reason, be it your birthday, be it Christmas, whatever, and they're going to pick something up like that. There's going to be a grandma that knows their grandson loves Magic the Gathering. And they get a welcome booster or they get a, you know, a, a set bo a theme booster. No, nice, Francis. Thank you very much. Last time I'll drop this in here. Yeah, if anybody wants to join our Discord, hop on in. We're going to be talking about that. Yeah, theme booster. Right, Corey. That's exactly my point. It's a big box store thing. It exists as, as just a, another purchase. I, I think it was supposed to be like a fun draft experience kind of thing i've never used them for that i've never even purchased one i uh, just it is what it is it's just an additional product i don't want them to start putting those in the you know have exclusive cards in there that's where they're gonna lose me on that that is where we that is where we separate Let's see if there's any new piece of news dropping. Favorite thing about today, these lands. Most most meh thing that'll probably get too much discussion. Hitetsugo variants. I doubt these do anything. Like if this was a wildly playable card, maybe. But it's just solid. It's just interesting. <laughs> but Mike, that's kind of the point. I mean, I know you're joking, but if a if a grandma asked me what what pack can I buy for my grandson while I was standing there at Target, I'd be like, "What do you want to spend? You want to spend like twenty five bucks? Let's let's go for the collector booster, Grandma. Kids gonna love it. Might pull something dope. It's gonna be more fun to open anyway. The theme boosters. I mean, it's just." Eh, whatever. Am I Jake or Joel? I am Joel. I am Joel. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. All the YouTube stuff. That's going to do it for me today. If you want to get involved with the channel on a deeper level, check out our Patreon. We got some cool stuff going on over there every single month. 
go check out our patreon see if you want to support the channel jake and i are trying to do this as our full-time job and not just throw together a stream after work and you can directly help us by joining our patreon other than that go jump in our discord i've dropped the link a bunch of times i hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their thursday yeah, I'm not trying to trick anybody, Chen. I am Jake. No, I'm Joel. I'm Joel. I'm hungry. I said sushi one too many times during this stream, and now I want food. I had a good time watching the the cringe fest with y'all. <laughs> no, it, they did a great job. It's a very difficult job. I can attest to that, and... I'm sure that the commenters in their stream were not being as nice with uh, their mild criticisms of how it went. <laughs> oh, Spencer, we had a good time. Go and count how many times Mauro has to level with you or has to be honest about something, has to reiterate something. <laughs> Nate, thank you for that subscription. I really appreciate it. Everybody who subscribed during the stream that has told me, Nate, Rudy, Marcelo, Brandon, Daniel, David, Dog, High Life, Hobbies. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. Jake does too. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your Thursday night. We love you all. It looks cool, Spencer. It's mostly we saw aesthetics, but you know, these are cool. I'll leave you with these. I hope everyone has a beautiful Thursday. Have a good weekend. Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Mark, no. Mark, there's no more. Mark, there is no more. Mark, no, you can't do any more.